Forge World, the little moon orbiting around the planet Games Workshop. They've been making resin models for a while now, and I want to look at the five best and five worst big models. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Lately, more and more, I've been souring on Forge World. When I was first getting into the hobby, they were mysterious. They had their own separate website. And here in the States, we had to pay them with British doubloons. They were the place to go if you had a finished army. You had all you needed for your army and then some. You went to them because you needed a flagship, a centerpiece, something to sit in the middle of your force and draw all the eyes, a model to bring all the boys to the yard. Perhaps I was just naive back then, maybe it was a lack of experience, or maybe Forge World has changed. But now they make overly expensive models that are poorer quality than Games Workshop plastics. There was a time where resin was king, and the only way to get really detailed minis was resin, but that was probably a decade ago. But there is still one thing Forge World has in its pocket that makes them worthwhile. The titans, the monsters, the biggest, silliest, and awesomest models. They are the ultimate painting and modeling challenges, and there is a magic to having the biggest vehicle. It puts a nice period on an army. So let's get to the list. Here are the five most awesome big models, and the five models that no one should ever buy. Ever. Number one, the Great Brass Scorpion. This model is sexy, and would be a heck of a flagship for any Chaos Army. I love the glittery candy red color it has now, but it would look really good in Nurgle Green, Zinch Blue, even Slaneshi Pink. This model is outstanding and actually would look right at home next to all of the other dino bots and mechanical bugs that make up the Chaos Vehicles. A lot of models claim to be able to tear through a building or wall, but this model actually looks like it can punch, scrape, and chainsaw its way through anything. I want to see this model, I want to fight against this model, and I love this model. Number 2, the Eldar Revenant Titan. This is the cheapest and, in my opinion, best Eldar Titan. This model goes against the norm of super heavies being heavy and actually is thin as a rod. This model is lithe. It looks like it could dance across the battlefield skipping along as its enormous lance-shaped cannons blast apart enemy vehicles. It is so different from similar models from the Imperium, where those are bricks with feet, this looks like it could actually be a fast, agile war machine. It's very alien. It's very mech. Get out of here, Tau. The Eldar have you beat. It has a grace to it that reminds me why the Eldar are cool. They're usually not my favorite army, but when I see this model painted up online, I get it. Eldar can be badass. Number 3, the Dark Eldar Tantalus. Not technically a super heavy, but it should be. It's massive and gorgeous. Every Eldar player should have one of these. It is a death sailboat. It is maybe the best looking 40k model, period. It is so awesome. I don't care if its rules suck, just make up new ones. This model needs to be seen more often. It comes with etched brass flooring. How cool is that? I want to buy one of these just for the experience of building and painting it. I don't own a single Eldar model. I don't care to own a single Eldar model, but this model is a work of art. And it's not even millions of dollars like the other big kits. I don't know why it's not hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Maybe because it's physically less resin than some, but it has a very similar footprint to those giants. Get one. Number four, the Tyranid Herofint Bio Titan. It's getting a little old, but it still holds up. Imagine for a second, this thing lumbering along on its giant legs towards you, towering in the air. This thing should be fighting Godzilla. They are big and terrifying and very insect-like and alien. It seems like most Tyranid kits are becoming just bigger or smaller Carnifexes, round bodies with different parts sticking out, but this thing is weird and long, with four big grasshopper legs. Sometimes lightning strikes in a design. You can't plan for it, you just have to appreciate it when it arrives. The Herofint is an absolutely killer model, and I'm going to shake the hand of the first gamer I play against who shows up with one of these. That will be a very memorable game. And I've seen videos. It is a massive achievement just to get one of these things built. And finally, number five, the Warhound Pattern Titan. The least very, very expensive Titan model, and I think it's the best one. I was debating between this model and the Thunderhawk gunship, and although I love the Thunderhawk, it is just so slightly nudged out by this. This model is super fun. Its animal legs actually look like it could walk instead of the toddler stance of the Reaver or the impossible weight of the Warlord. It has a lot of interesting details, like the headlights for nostrils and the intake grill that looks like teeth. I like that the name really does describe the model, the Warhound. It's a titan that runs around like a dog. I can imagine it running up to a bunker, giving it a couple of sniffs, and then mega flamethrowering it. It is a beast of a model, and it's a comedy of riches when it comes to the weapon options. Huge plasma guns, giant flamethrowers, and gatling bolters. Oh my. 
man, I get excited looking at models this big. There is something about massive units. The thought of bringing one model that is as points heavy as half an army just sounds like fun. It's like 40k concentrate. They are mesmerizing and I love them. With that said, not all big models are good. Let's look at the five worst big units. Number one, the Warlord Titan. That is right, starting off with the big one, the Warlord Titan. This one sucks because no model should cost two grand. That is just ludicrous. It's dumb, it's irresponsible. I think this model's price has broken out of the hobby money and into real world money. I get it, models can be expensive and sometimes really expensive, but if I spent two grand on a mini, it would hurt my real life. That is real money, invest it, take a trip, fix your car. I do not like that this model exists. With that said, it is cool looking, and I could see myself getting the baby Adeptus Titanicus version. It's a cool mini, but how could it ever, ever be worth it? Number two, the Necron Pylon. This one didn't go on the list right away because it's kind of boring. I kept forgetting it existed. There is nothing really wrong with it, but there's also really nothing to latch onto either. And there is the added problem that this is just not what the Necrons look like anymore. It looks very HR Geiger compared to the obelisks and pyramids of modern Necron design philosophies. Also, a stationary gun emplacement does not seem like it'd be very much fun to play with. You get to shoot it once a turn. But compare that to a model like the Warhound Titan who can run around and shoot and get into combat. You don't get to do that much stuff with this. This just sits either on the shelf or just sits on the battlefield and shoots a little. It looks good though. I feel like if you scraped off the Necron symbols and glued on some drones, it could make a really, really good Tau gun. Number three, this one's a mouthful, the Mechanicum Acastus Knight Asterius. This model reminds me that bigger is not always better, and actually it is bigger in all the wrong areas. The biggest flaw is what the heck is going on with the guns. It looks like a five-year-old carrying a gallon of milk in either hand. It would look so much better if the guns were a lot smaller, and maybe not dangling off of puny little arms. Proportions make a big difference, and gigantic guns and a pin head looks kinda dumb. These guns better have zero recoil, because if they have any, this thing's just gonna topple right over. All of these things I just laid out completely fixed on the Acastus Knight Pophyron. It's the same thing, but better. The guns are integrated well into the body section, not dangling on little arms. Why have arms? Why have arms? Because of how big the guns are, there's not a really big range of motion. The two big guns really irk me. The size really makes the thing feel out of scale. And these two kits are almost identical, but they feel very different. Number four, the Imperial Navy Marauder Destroyer. This model on the list probably shocks you. That model's great, what on earth is wrong with Jay? Well, now this probably is my most wrong take in all of 40K, but I don't think flyers belong in the game. I don't like the big stand. It's hard to find enough room to place it on the table between troops and terrain. It's awkward to play with flyers. And the ugly X-shaped clear flying stand is obnoxious. Playing with flyers, dealing with the movement restrictions, the pivoting, the minimum distances, flying on and off the table, off the board. The game 40K is too small to support airplanes. Let them be an Aeronautica Imperialis. I hear that game is great. Let them be over there. But they just do not work well on the tabletop. And this ship is massive. It also just kind of looks like a normal real life plane. It's not extra enough to excite me. It takes up a quarter of the board and you're just gonna win unless your opponent brought tons of anti-air stuff, which they never do. And finally, number five, the Astraea Super Heavy Tank. Finishing off with one of the newest kits, the Primaris Tank. To me, this just does not look like 40K. And I hate to say that because what the heck does that even mean? What does it mean for something to look 40K-ish? Well, usually a healthy dose of World War II era tanks, big tracks, boxy shapes covered in square panels and rivets. This tank feels very modern sci-fi. I could see this in Halo or Mass Effect, but not really in 40K. I get that it's pushing Space Marines into a new direction, but I think this was too much too fast. Maybe if it had classic 40K guns attached to a never before seen chassis, that would help or perhaps new Primaris Battle Cannon attached to a regular Bane Blade tank. This thing is just not for an old Black Templar player like me, but if this thing jimmies your jams, if it jingles your jangles, then more power to you. get after it. Well, there you have it. Those were the five Forge World super big models that are incredible and some that I won't miss when they disappear from the web store in eight months. There is a power to the big models. I have seen a few in person and I've held some in my hands and they look like fun. However, let me say this real quick. These models are expensive and are absolutely unnecessary for the game of 40K. You can have a long, fun-filled Warhammer 40K career without ever touching big expensive models like these. They're not for everyone. Really have a good think before pulling the trigger and be prepared to love the challenge of building and owning one of these monstrosities. I think I have room in my heart and my house for maybe one of these. 
one day. In addition to the occasional opinion piece, we make Wargaming tutorials every single week, and if you like them, you might consider supporting us over on Patreon. Over there, you'll gain access to some behind the scenes, hobby hangouts, and more exclusive content. So what do you guys think? Do you have a big old Forge World model perpetually sitting in your shopping cart? Let me know what that is and how wrong all of my picks were in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.